we had started looking at this particular function here after having started to think about what a what a limit is can we uh, wrap up any conversations we're having please uh, we had worked through this looking at what the limit of uh, using this situation involving speed was the speed of something that's falling and we had figured out what the instantaneous speed was the slope at that point so we wrote an expression for the slope um, between two points and then we pushed the points closer and closer together okay we wrote an expression for the slope where the variable was the distance in between the points the run okay the x2 minus x1 and then we used limits we looked at what the limit seemed like it should be you know with a table and with uh, on a graph and then we then we worked through it algebraically Okay, the, at the start here, I don't want us to get all hung up in the, the steps and the algebra that we're using. Uh, it's more important just to understand what the concept of a limit is. Okay, the concept of a limit is, you know, is uh, looking at the behavior of a function near a certain value. So we were looking at a function where we wouldn't be able to do it algebraically as neatly as the other one. Uh, I think it was using a calculator last time, but we'll use something a little more dynamic this time. Uh, if you, you know, obviously you can calculate any value you want here. This is just a point on this function, sine x over x. The fact that it's sine x over x is it doesn't, it doesn't just equally go up, down, up, down. If you, uh, if you scroll one way or the other here, um, like if you look out to this side, it gets less and less and less, right? It's flattening out because as you, the farther you go, sine x always stays between 1 and negative 1, but x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you have something that's 1, or between 1 and negative 1, divided by a bigger and bigger number, it's going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so we could actually just compress it instead of doing this, if you wanted to look at it that way. Okay, so if you look at, if you, if you uh, look farther along there, it's going to just flatten out there. So we're going to look at two limits here. One that I wrote, one that was in the document already. Um, let's go back to this. One of, the, one of the limits is what's the limit as you approach, as x approaches zero? As you allow x to approach zero, the reason we might want to look at that limit is because if you put the dot there, it disappears, right? That point is undefined, okay? There is no value there. If you drew it on paper, you draw it with a hole in the graph there. It's undefined at that point. Oh, strangely enough, how do I get it back? <laughs> um, okay, there, no. Oh well, um, lost my point forever. I can undo it, maybe. Try again. Doesn't like it. Come on. There. Okay. Well, that's a quite a few undos, but um, what is going on here? That point, anywhere you go, you can you have a value that's defined, but right in the center there, it is not. You can look at the limit of what it looks like it should be, right? It looks like if you can't even tell that there's a missing value there, just judging by this picture. As you get closer from the right to zero, as you allow x to get closer from the right, what does it look like that value should be? It looks like it should be one, right? And as you get closer from the from the left, it also looks like it should be one. The fact that on both sides of this things, it looks like it's approaching one. That's what the limit of a function is. Even though it's undefined at that point, you can talk about, you can look at the behavior of the function as you get infinitely close to the point, and then think of that as the value, basically. It isn't the value. The function's undefined, but you can talk about the limit, right? So I think we wrote last time, the limit as you approach zero, that's what that means. The limit of this function as you approach zero is one. It's equal to one. It's not roughly equal to one. It's equal to one. Right? As you get nearby, this is closer and closer to 1. So the word limit means as you get infinitely close. The other limit that we could write is as x approaches infinity, or negative infinity for that matter, if we go back to this. If you change this so you can see this again. Why does it keep doing this to me? There we go. So if you go out to the right here with this point, uh, if you look at what happens with the values here, okay, if you look at what happens with the values in that point, the y values, 
Okay, the, as the x value gets bigger and bigger, right, we're up at 34 for x, 0 0.02 for y, the y values are going to fluctuate from positive to negative, but they're getting smaller and smaller overall, right? This is starting to hover just around 0, the bigger the x value gets. If you did this infinitely, what would that line start to look like? I mean, it's always going to curve. It's always going to curve if you stop at any finite value. But if you allow x to approach infinity, meaning if you let it go on forever, this is going to be 0. Not it's going to be roughly equal to 0. It's going to be 0. That, that's what the limit is. The limit is 0. That's the limiting value. Okay? It's getting closer and closer to that value so that you say that that's the limit. Uh, we looked, I don't know if you looked at this definition down at the bottom here. When you put it in mathematical terms like that, it always gets complicated. You can talk about the limit as x approaches a fixed value like that, or you can talk about the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. But when you talk about, when you write that notation there, it's important to know what it means, right? So that, that yellow part there, it, well, let's start it in the order you would say it. The limit, the blue part, the limit of... Uh, the function f of x of f of x. Um, the as x approaches a is that part. And then equals l, well, that's what it's equal to. Sometimes people get stuck because of the symbols. You start to lose track of what you're talking about. This is just a symbolic way of saying that statement. As you let x get closer and closer to whatever this value is, the limiting value is this. The thing we looked at with E, it had a limiting value because it, as X approached infinity, it leveled off at that value. Okay, you're not always going to have a finite limit like this. Sometimes a limit might be infinity or negative infinity. As I said, I think a function like X squared, as X approaches infinity, there's no limiting value. It doesn't level off anywhere. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You can talk about limits even where functions are defined. The one we looked at here, this function is undefined at zero, which is why it's useful to look at the limit. But you could look at limits when functions are defined. Okay, It doesn't matter whether, whether something's defined or not. Like you could say, you know, just pick any function that you happen to know here. Um, y equals 3x squared plus 2. You could ask, what's the limit of this function as x approaches 1? All right, like this is presumably some parabola up there at 2, right? You could say, what's the limit as, as you get closer and closer to, to 1 here, right? If you have a point and you're you're wondering what the limit is as you approach 1. As x gets closer and closer to 1, the value is whatever the value of that function is, right? This is defined at 1. That's a really easy limit to, to figure out, right? Let's call that f of x. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is you just put in the 1, right? You can figure it out because you can sub in the value. It doesn't matter whether the function is defined or not. If you put in a 1 there, what do you get? 3 plus 2, you get 5, right? This value would be 5 here. It doesn't matter whether there's an, a, an open circle there or whether it's defined or actually whether you made up some crazy function where it was defined as a different value. You're asking, how does the function behave near this value on either side? All right, so that's what, that's what this next thing is here. There's three different functions that look very similar to each other. So we're going to draw a graph of each one, which I didn't give you a space to draw a graph, but uh, we'll use a calculator for this. Then you can make sure you know how to put things like this in and find holes in the graph and things like that. Okay, so let's look at all three of those, but we'll look at them one at a time. Actually, let's stop this and start it again or I'll run out of time.